Hello and welcome back to Fantasy Star Online Episode 1, where today we're going to be making our way through the caves. Also, my mag has evolved again, but we'll get to see it once we're actually in the caves. So down we go. It's a little kitty. It's a Sato now. So yeah. It's giving us a bunch of mind. And we're going to be feeding it dye fluids forever. At least until it's max level. At which point we only feed it again if we get knocked out at some point. And we one-shot evil sharks with Foey. Turns out having more mind on your mag is good and helpful. It's weird how that works. Just like, hey, in an RPG, if your stats are higher, you're better? Never would have guessed that, I'm sure. Is it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Perhaps. Maybe that's why we call them a beasts, short for altered beasts. Rico might be in too deep here. Can't one shot a shark with Zonde. Was really trying to hit the lily twice, but the shark went and got itself targeted. Gonna be nice just going through this place kind of quickish. Yeah. Is that the poison part of the poison lily? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Oh, that's the whole thing. shot you? Nope. Oh, more lilies. I guess I was within range. That's fine. We've got antidotes. Alrighty. Quite long enough reach there. Yep, it does. So we can go either way. But that capsule was this way, which makes me think that this way might be the way to get deeper into this cave. Okay. I guess that's a hint that the next room is trapped. So let's try going the other way real quick. Yeah. The other way might lead to a dead end more quickly. And sure enough, it does. Can't get much more quick than instant. And we'll leave the moon atomizer there because it is of no use to us. I wonder if our little kitty wants some fluids. So as you can see, every time we give it a dye fluid, it only gains mind and it gets a little smarter. That IQ will eventually reach 200, at which point it will not get any smarter. Oh. What's this doing in here? Also, this is the, uh, 
I think this is the, my third session playing this, but the first one after I started actually editing the episodes. And I have discovered that the YouTube algorithm really likes those little uh, fence switches for the automatically selected thumbnails. Like, every time I interact with one head-on, uh, YouTube tries very hard to make that be the default thumbnail for that video. And I'm just going to take another look this other direction here. Because, yeah, this four switch thing I don't think is allowed to be the critical path forward. Because they can't guarantee if you're playing multiplayer that you'll have more than two players. And yeah, sure enough, we've got a dead end. Right, you were... I guess Barda was right for you. It's been over a week. I've forgotten some things. Like what pal sharks don't like being hit by. Still pretty sure it's Barda. Could be wrong. Yeah, it looks like it's probably Barda. For Barda to do the same damage as Foy. But I'm pretty sure my Foey is a higher level. And even if it's not a higher level, I think it's got higher base damage because it's a single target thing. Okay. I actually kind of wish I went with the uh, a different color outfit. Because Sato is cute and all, but, like, in some other colors, it looks better. Like, the kind of mint green type of color I think Sato looks real good in. Which, I guess Sega agrees with me on that count, considering that's the color of Sato they put in the Sato card in Episode 3. Hi. Right, you don't like Foley, it's... Yeah. I was just like, hey, I gotta cast a tech. This thing's right in front of me. And I immediately cast the wrong tech. Okay. So clearly we're gonna be making a left turn at some point or else there'll be a warp because that is a locked door over there. Or there's a button right here that unlocks it. That's also a possibility. But it also spawned a poison lily. And evil sharks. Eh, just a cane. Would be better if it wasn't just a cane. But we'll still take it. What's up, Rico? Uh-huh. Or you can just cast Foey at it from in front of it. Also, Rico, that was a little belated. I had already defeated a couple grass assassins in here before that showed up. You gotta give people hints before they can encounter the things that might be dangerous. Otherwise, the hint isn't as useful. After all, you can't give hints to a dead man. I shouldn't have grabbed that telepipe. Oop. Let's not get in range of that spit. Whoops, wasted some TP. And we're gonna need to use some fluids pretty soon here. In fact, let's use a fluid right now, because monofluids are not nearly as valuable as they once were to us. Honestly, it's a little bit of a shame that our Sato wants dye fluids, because so do we. And having us both after the same fluids is just not going to make anyone happy. Though, while I will always need dye fluids, 
his little kitty cat will eventually stop needing them. So, I guess it's still better to give them to the Sato when we can afford to? Okay. So we can just do one combo after a Barda for the Pal Sharks. That's good to know. Oh, we're actually getting pretty close to a level. We might be able to get there before we run out of TP, depending on what we encounter. If it's a bunch of evil sharks, then we can almost certainly do it. Okay, so let's try going this way. Well, looks like that was a good guess. So the locked door, I don't think, would end up being part of the path forward. Oh. There's a button that we can only reach by going through the locked door. So actually, the locked door is required. Ah! Traps everywhere. Okay. The issue... Well, maybe that's not through the locked door. Well, it has to be, because there's nowhere else we can go. It's just it might be a warp. Oh no, it's dark. Until we get to that button over there. Oh, grass assassin. And a pal shark. Oh no. Nope. You are not freezing me in place. Okay, now you can freeze me in place all you want. Oh no! It's doing its charge! Ow. I hate how it's in invulnerable during that little screech. It makes me just waste my TP. Dang, it wasn't close enough. Yeah, we're not gonna level up on... Really? Zero? Yeah, no level on just the TP we had. Still 82 to go. That was real inefficient. Uh, let's just go ahead and flew it up then. Because once we level, then we get a free TP recovery, but that's once we level. Traps. Let's. It's interesting how a trap exploded with a gun still has the same animation for the explosion, and yet the explosion becomes harmless. Oh, look, more enemies. Ooh. Kill shark. So, 71, 34. Yeah, Foey is no good. Should have used Foey on this guy, though. That's it? Just two sharks? That's it? Why are we getting such trash XP? The answer is because it was only two sharks. We need more enemies to get more XP. And we need just regular evil sharks if we want to have some nice, efficient levels. This is not efficient. Okay, so... Two sharks and change until we level. And unfortunately, we did not have enough TP to take on this nano dragon. Thus, the fluid was necessary. There it is. Should have gone for the nano dragon first. That would have taken more TP. 
been more efficient. And we've got two sharks and two lilies. If we can get the sharks over here without getting ourselves poisoned. That was efficient. All right, let's see what Rico left behind for us this time. Uh-huh. I don't need the tips. I prefer when you give me story info. Two sharks means regular foey. We need a third. I mean, it is a third. It's not the kind that Foey does super amazing on, but I guess Foey is equivalent to Barda, so it's it's not the worst it could be. What's in here? A smisher. What about the other way? Oh no, this room also leads to more things. I find it interesting how many things in the caves have scythe hands. Like... Hmm, die grinder. Is that a common evolutionary adaptation? Like, what in the real world has scythe hands other than a praying mantis or a mantis shrimp? I can't really think of... Oh, that's the entrance to cave two. I could just go in there. It would save time. But what if there's more things to find? Yeah, just scythe hands are way more common on Regol than on Earth, I guess. But then again, these are altered beasts, not just regular beasts. Oh no, it's dark, but there's a light right over there. Sounds like a grass assassin. And that's what it is. These boxes were trying to pen me in. Seriously, evil sharks are the most efficient source of XP for us right now. I wonder what would happen if I gave these three a taste of this. They would not die, that's what. At least not immediately. And that dye fluid reminds me. Our mag wants dye fluids. There we go. So our mind will go higher still at the next feeding. So what do we got in here? Ooh, that's a decent reward for coming the wrong way. So now we gotta work our way back to that teleporter. So, uh, an interesting little thing I once did. Uh, you, back in the first episode, you saw that I had a Rekka seal named RN004. Uh, that character I made while at a friend's house. Was just playing this for old time's sake. And... Yeah, my friends were doing some board game or something that uh, we had one player too many for. So I was like, oh, I'll just play some PSO or something. 
So I made that character and decided, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see how far I can get without doing any quests, just going through the game. I, yeah, just wanted to see how far I could get. And the answer was, uh, having done nothing but just these little free roams through each area once. Like, I wasn't repeating things. I just went through the forest and then went through the cave. I got up to the boss of the caves and then died against it. And that's how far I got without dying and without doing any quests or anything. But it was interesting finding my limit. I'm sure there are people who could get farther than me, and I'm sure I might have been able to get farther if I was a different class. Oh, no! Because, uh, yeah, Rekasil doesn't really have access to a whole lot of healing other than items. And, like, when it comes to dealing actual damage to uh to the boss wait did I just make two extra slimes no don't freeze me I have made a dangerous room get out of here Why are there four slimes now? This is... This is a lot of slimes. I think I'm just gonna get rid of them. There we go. But yeah, like, if I was one of the melee classes that could use a nice, beefy melee weapon, I might have been able to put more damage on the third boss. Or, not the third boss. The boss of the cave. Three. Uh, I might also have been able to take more hits or something. I don't know. Actually, don't Rekha Seals have, like, super high defense? Like, not as high as uh, Ray Cast, but... I don't know. They don't attack at the closest of range. They kind of extend their little... Is it a pseudopod? A tail? A tentacle? W what would you call it? I guess technically it would be a pseudopod. Oh no! So many traps! Okay, if I can get both of these guys, then that's better than nothing. There we go. Well, we might as well use that. Let's heal ourselves first. I don't know that... Yeah, we definitely didn't need to spend TP before grabbing it, but it doesn't hurt to do so. Wow, that was uh, not a very valuable dead end. So, what do we got over this way? This was about the slimes, right? Yeah. Okay. Ow! Darn instant exploding traps. Hello, shark. Oh, you've got friends. Right, we want this. Oh, more friends? Ooh, pal friends. So not friends, they're pals. Well, I got three of them. Oh no, a grass assassin, really? Okay, that was meant for the assassin. There we go. Dang, these rooms are just stacked with enemies. 
Yeah, slime's a little too far there. It was worth a shot. I don't know what else spawned in. Oh, sharks? Yeah, why am I making two extra slimes now instead of just one? What's the deal? I don't understand. How? What? I didn't... I, I thought you couldn't make extras after you'd already made extras out of one. Yeah, that didn't make extras. Is it because we crit or something? That didn't make an extra. Loved a slime to slime? Slime to death. Okay. Multiple paths yet again. Let's see what Rico has to say. Okay. Yeah. All those people that I've got with me, you know? I don't even know what type of mine she's talking about. Oh, we, we could have not used the... Well, no, we couldn't have not used the monofluid because we were full-on monofluids. I guess we could have left it on the floor. But then it wouldn't be helpful unless we went and backtracked for it. And if we're going to backtrack for that, we might as well just backtrack for this. Healing rings are nice, and I appreciate them. Well, since you're all alone, you just get the zaps. Always convenient when you freeze a slime. Um, why another one? I don't understand. Another? Oh, no. Okay, look. Yet another. Ah! Oh no! Not a freezing trap! Dang it. Not in time. I don't know why I bother to split these things. They're worth the same XP as an evil shark. And it's not exactly... It, it, Ibarda isn't exactly a cheap spell. It's not like they can drop anything super rare for me. I get, ow! I guess it's just because it's a chance at a rare, and the rares, maybe they're worth more XP. I wasn't paying attention when we beat that one that last time. Dang it! Do I need to actually be using my trap visions? I think I do. Well, we found a switch. Dang, we're finding some stuff with some pretty high grinds on it. Plus seven is not low. So, since we're back here, we can make use of the healing ring yet again. That's always nice. Just in case. Too many traps lately. Hey, we found the waterfall with the rainbow. It is a pretty room. 
Ow. Kind of annoying our Zonde can't target a thing that's off screen. soul barrier. A green one, specifically, because I've seen a few more white ones in the shops, but knowing that green ones are out there, it's like, why would I choose a white one? Back away. Like, I can find a green one, theoretically, at least. So, paying for a white one. Just seems horribly inefficient. There's two boxes over there. I can't just leave them. Gotta go rescue them. Okay, looks like there's another message from Rico over there. Fine. Guess we gotta get a little closer if we wanna actually bring these things down. Okay. Grass Assassin gets those. Ow. Evil Sharks get these. Er, sorry, Gill Sharks. What do you got, Rico? Yeah, it sure did. Well, that's odd. Maybe. Or maybe like a bunch of animals or maybe just the people on board were super obese. You don't know. Quit making assumptions, Rico. Where am I in relation to other things? Okay, so this way to rescue the boxes. And where's my mag in relation to hunger? Right there. Hooray, that's two more mind strength for us. I was trying to hit the box, but I guess... Oh, we can just... Damn it. Wait, we just took no damage from that trap. That's odd. Yeah, um, what was I saying? Right, we can just slap a lily and then Zonde it to kill it. It's good to know. Oh, well, would you look at that? Time to go the other way. Yeah. Considering this just boxes over here, I don't know that I'm going to feel super compelled to come back to rescue them. That's more time than it's worth. Especially considering the boxes are very unlikely to have anything we actually want. Okay, time for some foley action. No, it's just a saber. We don't need a saber. Not when we have a stick. But we do have some buttons to press. Yeah, some switches do have traps over them. And are fake. And I know this isn't the door we just opened with all those buttons. But it is the door with that in it. Might as well press that.
Uh huh. Yeah, it is. Maybe. And it is already active. So I guess the one we found in that one quest did in fact count. So what's behind here? More hallway. Okay, so slap and zap. Nope. Nope. Dang it, why did you retarget to the shark? There was a perfectly good dress assassin directly in front of you. start using these grinders? I mean, most of the times I've made characters and actually known better, I've saved my grinders until I actually get rare equipment. But, like, we find enough that I could probably get away with using some? Oh? Okay. And what'll this open? I wasn't paying attention. Oh. That door over there was locked. I guess that would uh, answer the question pretty quickly, wouldn't it? So, we didn't go through that other door with all the buttons, and with how far we're going here, I think going back and looking through that is a good thing to do at this particular point in time. Still not going to go rescue those boxes. Though I will zap them open. Okay. Probably the best thing I could expect from there is, like, escape dolls. Which admittedly would be pretty nice. But I don't feel like backtracking for them. More buttons. Ah, this must have been what Rico was referencing with I never imagined a trap could look like a switch. Alright, so now we know exactly which buttons to not press. There we go. Whoops. Was mashing the button a little harder than I should have been there. This is not a masher game. It is a deliberate timing game. Not quite as deliberate timing as uh, Fantasy Star Portable 2, which I rather liked, but unfortunately don't have any means of recording. Oh, cool. We backtracked for boxes. I don't need a moon atomizer. Don't need a cane. Those extra sharks go a little way to ease the hurt of betrayal by finding only those boxes. Still don't need a cane, even if it's unidentified. Yeah, Fantasy Star Portable 2, instead of having a separate button for light and heavy attacks, uh, what happened was you had just an attack button. The first time you pressed it, it was a light attack. And then there would be a ring that would uh, start. It, it would pop up around it and shrink until... <coughs> until sneeze. But 
until it matched the size of the button on screen. And if you pressed it when it was at the right size, not too small, not too big, then your next attack would be a heavy attack. Yeah, we already read that. So, like, instead of being able to do heavy, heavy, heavy by just pressing the buttons, it was you would press the light attack button with proper timing to do a light heavy or heavy. And, like, you could press it early to just do a light attack again. So, really what it was was it just basically took the timing that we have here in this game and simplified it down to just one button press, or one specific button rather than having two different buttons do the two different things. Which I think was a pretty good solution, honestly. If they could implement that in this game, it would give us a little more uh, flexibility. And now we just get to sit here for a moment. It's like, yeah, needing to have two buttons eaten up for a light and heavy attack. It's not ideal. So if we were able to have it on just this and then just wait for the time it takes to charge this before pressing again. Yeah, it's an elegant solution and I like it. Plus, it makes it feel more like a skill thing and less like a just, hey, it's a different button. And looking at the time, it is time to end this episode here. So join us next time when we will be fighting the boss of the cave. See you then, friends.